Hey, what's up GQ? I'm Michael Bisping and these are my essential items. All right, so the first thing on my list has to be, without a shadow of a doubt, coffee. I cannot start my day without a coffee. I'm very lucky, my wife, first thing in the morning, she comes down, she gets me a coffee, puts it by the side of my bed, and then hands me the TV remote control to watch the news. But as I say, two, three, sometimes four cups of coffee, then I'm out of my mind, brain spinning, I go out on a run, Coffee wakes me up, but I have no problem going to sleep on it either. In fact, sometimes I'll have a coffee in the afternoon and then fall straight asleep, you know. I think it's because when I was a professional athlete, I'd train in the morning, I'd come back, I'd be exhausted, and I'd have the nap. So even now today, I still gotta squeeze in a little 20 minute nap. I'll say, babe, do me a favor, 3 p.m., 20 minutes from now, wake me up with the Camara coffee, and there it is, straight back on the grind. When I fought in the UFC, I got a detached retina. Ultimately, I lost the vision in my right eye, which is a shame, but it is what it is. For many years, I had a disfigured eye. Well, I still have a disfigured eye, but I got a prosthetic lens, which actually changed my life in many ways, and I'll show you right now. So as we see, there is the prosthetic lens. So I definitely can't live without this thing. I always have this on me. That's my most prized possession in the world because as you can see, without it in, it's not a good look. This thing here changed my life in so many ways because the majority of work, what I do is generally on camera. Even though, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a knucklehead, I'm quote unquote tough guy, whatever you want to say, you know, I still got my insecurities and I would go in for auditions and things like that. And I was always so self-conscious because, you know, unless the part in a movie or a TV show doesn't call for somebody with a messed up eye, you're not really going to get the part. But still, you know, and you're working on TV, you know, doing commentary and stuff. People can be mean. People can be mean. A lot of people will talk a lot of shit about my eye. Eventually, I was going to have my eyeball removed because I thought I'm sick of looking like this. So I'll, um, I'll get it removed. I'll get a glass eye put in. So I went to see a doctor. I said, I told them what I wanted. I said, I want it removed. It. I want a glass eye put in. I'm sick of looking like this. And they said, no, we don't do that. Unless it's absolutely necessary to remove the eye, we don't do that. He said, but have you thought about a prosthetic eyepiece? And anyway, so it turns out this doctor, just five minutes from my house, makes these things here. They hand paint them to match the other one precisely. $3,500, the best three grand that I ever spent in my entire life because when you put it back in, hold on, ow, <laughs> hold on, ow. As you can see now, it's hard to tell. Okay, next item on my list. I mean, it's a little cliche because I used to fight for a living, but a pair of boxing gloves because it's still a part of my workout. I still love it. I don't fight anymore, but one of the things that I really enjoy is going in the garage. I've got a little gym set up in there and hitting the bag. It really is a tremendous workout. It lets me vent some of my frustrations and of course, burn a few calories and stay fit along the way. Uh, the ones I like to use, these are from Sanable. It's a brand that I absolutely love that I've been involved with now for about six years. Decent price point, very, very good quality. But these ones here in particular, these are the Michael Bisping Specials. These are a signature glove that they did. They have some stats about me. They even have the latitude and longitude of my hometown, my record, all that type of thing. But yeah, as I say, to this day, still love hitting the bag. One of the best workouts you can do. I love the way that these fit. I love the way they feel on the hand. And I love the way they feel when you connect with somebody's jaw. Okay, the next item on the list for me, is a good watch. Okay, I don't believe in too many accessories for a man. You know, I don't wear earrings, I don't wear rings, chains, necklaces, things like that, but I think a good watch for me is absolutely essential. These three here, these are special to me. This one here, this is a Breitling. This was given to me when I won the Ultimate Fighter back in 2005. That was a big turning point in my life. This one here, this was actually a gift of His Royal Highness Sheikh Maktoum of Dubai when I defended the belt in Manchester against Dan Henderson at UFC 204. I went out to Dubai and I was presented with that watch. So, you know, thank you very much, your highness. And then finally, this one here, when I was inducted into the UFC Hall of Fame, a dear friend and a business associate, I was in a restaurant celebrating. He said, Mike, come outside, I got something for you. And he says, Mike, a Hall of Famer, needs some goddamn gold. Okay, the next thing on my list, and. I guess it's not an original thing, but headphones, but more importantly, music. Prior to being a professional mixed martial artist and fighting in the UFC for a living, I was a professional DJ. 
DJ Mikey B. And a lot of people don't believe me when I say that, but yeah, I was a nightclub DJ for about 10 years. I still do a little bit now and again. I spun a set back in England back in November. So music is still a big passion of mine when I'm working out. Of course, it plays a big thing there. And, you know, I like all genres of music, but when I DJed, it was house and trance music. Uh, but I like hip hop, I like rock, I like classical music. I, I like all sorts. It's a very eclectic taste. These days, obviously, everyone's wearing AirPods. But unfortunately for me, I've got cauliflowered ears, so I can't put them in. But anyway, when you put these on, you can't see them. Look at that, perfect ears. Okay, the next one for me, when I'm traveling, when I leave the house, this is an absolute must for a number of reasons. I'm talking about CBD, specifically CBD from Hemp Fusion. This stuff, it's all natural, it's the best quality CBD, but for me, being a former fighter, spending many, many years in an octagon and getting my body beat up, I am still in pain every single day. I had neck surgery last year, they took out one of my discs, they put it in a titanium plate and four screws, and sadly, they gotta go back in, they gotta take out two more discs and put in two more metal plates. So this pain relief cream that I use here is on the go whenever I'm traveling. It's an absolute must, constantly applying. My brain is always working overtime, so the CBD here, this one's for stress support because, believe it or not, I'm a bit of a stressy bastard, and the energy support because, well, I'm always going a million miles an hour. But yeah, CBD for me, an absolute must, specifically from Hemp Fusion. Okay, this next one, I am definitely perpetuating a nonsense myth because everyone out there, they think I'm a drinker. I absolutely love red wine, you know, but only one glass a day, medicinal orders, as the doctors say. This one right here, this was from a friend of mine, a Christmas present. It's actually from 1966, which is the year that England won the World Cup. Uh, somebody asked me once, they said, are oh, you gonna open it when England win the World Cup again? I said, if that's the case, this will probably never get opened, and I'm only joking. All right, the next one is this product here from Hydrant. I like to work out and I sweat a lot. In fact, my wife, <laughs> she says it's absolutely disgusting the amount that I sweat. But they say the more you sweat, the better shape you're in. So there you go. This stuff here, it gives me all the electrolytes that I need. It's made from real ingredients, dried fruit juice powder, very low in calories, gives you that boost and gives you the electrolyte that you need. So you can continue with your day. You don't feel sluggish. Maybe squeeze in a second workout of the day. All right, next thing on the list is a good pair of running shoes. And as you can see, these have seen better days because I use them a lot. Whenever I'm on the road, I go to a new city. One of the first things I like to do is run. You know, rather than just walking around and figuring out what's around you, I like to go for a run. You see what's around, you see little stores, you see different parts of town. It's a great way, there's mental stimulation. It's one of my favorite pastimes as well. These particular shoes are important for me because I've got two total knee replacements. The long career that I had in the octagon took its toll on my body. These ones here, they've got a tremendous amount of padding and sponging and air bubbles and I need shoes that are gonna give me the most absorption. I have some hills by my house. It's not much strain on the knees because you're going uphill but you still get the workout. It's part of my lifestyle. I like to run most days. All right, the next thing on my list, and it's a little weird, is a microphone and a webcam. Simply because, and I never would have thought this, but my career is basically talking these days. As I said, that's weird because when I was on The Ultimate Fighter, they used to subtitle me. They couldn't understand the word I said, but now I commentate the UFC. I'm always on the road, always traveling. I do a podcast, I do pre-fight shows, post-fight shows. So when I'm on the road, I need a webcam and I need a microphone. In terms of a webcam, I like this one from Logitech. It's pretty hard wearing, which is good for me because I'm clumsy and I don't look after things and I just throw it in the suitcase. You get great picture quality, it's 4K, and it's pretty cheap as well. And this one here, yeah, does the job, nothing special, but the sound's good, my producers like it. I haven't been told to replace it yet, so, so far so good. When I first moved to America, I started working on Fox Sports, doing pre and post fight shows and things like that. And I remember at the time, afterwards the producers would speak to me, they'd say, Mike, we love what you're saying. We think, we love the energy, we love the passion, but you speak far too quickly. We can't understand you half of the time. So they actually wanted to uh, get me to work with a dialect coach, which I never ended up doing, but I took the hint. So I actually now, when I'm working on TV, I have my broadcasting voice, if you will, and when I'm not, I talk like this. And I get a lot of abuse from English people all the time, like, Mike, why are you talking in an American accent? I'm, like, I'm not talking in an American accent, but people can't understand me. One thing I've learned 
is to slow down, try and talk a little deeper, you know, and uh, take my time. All right, that's it. These are my essential items from running to red wine to punching people in the face. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Get out of here.